Let's get some facts. You're gonna um, learn a lot. Established in 1988. Whoa, a little baby. Not that long. Mm-hmm. Fazoli's, like Olive Garden, was created with the intention of always becoming a chain. There are now over 200 Fazoli's in 26 states. I don't know how we missed this. This is crazy. That sounds like too many. It it, it does sound like, like an impossible many. number to <laughs> yeah. not know about. It. Yeah. Uh, are are there any in California? No. Uh, they're they're mostly in like the south and kind of like the east. I have we have a friend named uh, Andrew. You don't know him who. Uh, is from Mississippi, and I asked him about Fazoli's, and he went, "Oh yeah, their mascot's a like a tomato." And I said, oh yeah, Wait, I don't, really I don't cool. know this guy, but that sounds like something he said. <laughs> is this, is this, this guy's from Mississippi? He came in and he took the part you needed for the audio. Yeah, he stole it. Yeah. Didn't he say it was Andrew? Yeah, Didn't he stole he say it. Andrew took my cable or whatever. Eric threw a couple of people under the bus. He threw his fiance. Andrew under was the one bus. of them. Uh, Andrew, I think his dog as well. The dog, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Grem- dog he Mike- physically Michael's, threw under the bus. I definitely <laughs> threw Michael's shirt gremlins under the bus just in case. If they're shrinking <laughs> yeah. shirts, I don't put it past them. They're making them a little bigger, which is weird. Are they? I That's think they feel I wonder bad. How, do- how are they doing that? They're just they're using cold water. Oh, That's what- <laughs> it reverses the process. You gotta you gotta line dry them. Yep. So there you go. So far, you've learned one fact about okay. Fazoli's. One fact. On to fact number two. Fazoli's is not an Italian restaurant, but an Italian-American restaurant <laughs> offering fare like the Meatball Da Vinci and the oh Primo God. Italiano, which is weird because the restaurant was started in Kentucky by a company that made Long John Silver. <laughs> Ugh. Meatball Da Vinci. Everything about this is so fucked Why? up. What does that even? What's the what's what's clever about that? This I don't, why that's why, Michael? That's exactly why I included it because I went. What? Maybe like, they'll get the joke. What's the joke? Like, I think they're kind of just like, hey, Italian words. Put them <laughs> next to some other words. Yeah, just you're just saying things. <laughs> Meatball Da Vinci. So it was what? Meatball Da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> it was started by the people who started Long John Silver. Because that's they're disgusting. Because they're like, well, we'll just do an Italian thing, and it's like that's gross. That's two gross restaurants. Can we make a pledge to never eat at Long John Silver for this show? Uh, I mean, it's up to you guys. If you guys say no, you can always veto I a choice. Feel, I feel like that goes against the nature of the show, <sighs> mm-hmm. but I a hundred percent will pledge to never eat there. <laughs> Okay. Unless you're, unless we're really desperate. Okay. Uh-huh. So so Michael, you're playing devil's advocate, but also you absolutely agree with yes, Jordan. Correct. Yeah. yeah okay. He's a really bad devil's advocate. I just want people to know on paper what he's saying is wrong, but I completely uh-huh. agree yeah. with him. And I don't want to go yeah. there. I, think- I don't want to go there or eat anything from that hellhole. And I think I have the same conflicting issue where I don't want to like put ourselves in this in this box, but also I would prefer to never eat there again in my life. Right, and that's fine. That's fair. Um, <laughs> but we've always got Fazoli's. Fact yeah. number three. Uh, hold on, I just want to say oh, that all of all of this stuff it it makes so much sense now, knowing that it's from a Kentucky like based yep. company, and and that it's it's Everything qualified as. Italian American, yeah. like they go out of their way to be like, we're not an Italian place, we're an Italian American. It reminds place. me of that episode of The Sopranos where they go to Italy and they're so excited to try the food, but oh, yeah, but they don't like any of the food no. <laughs> because it's all seafood. Yeah, they're like, hey, you and got any? Oh. You got any meatball Da Vinci? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you sounded just like Tony. <laughs> hey, Gabagool. I thought uh, James Clyde. Gandolfini just rose from the grave. <laughs> He's back and he wants the meatball da Vinci. I want the meatball da Vinci. Hey, <laughs> hey you got any big Italian refrigerators I could leave open? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Go ahead. We'll it hasn't that. always been smooth sailing for Fazoli's. After a downturn in sales, they realized people were leaving because the quality of the food was terrible, <laughs> so they introduced new items and put in drive throughs <laughs> which I guess trick people into thinking that it is okay, that it is not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, I was going through a roller coaster as you read this, because I was like, it used to be worse? Oh no, we really you know messed what's out. crazy? Hey. It hey. didn't solve the problem with the quality. <laughs> it used to be worse <laughs> one of the franchisees that's why it says the quality of the food is terrible that's a direct quote from front one of the franchisees 
He said for a long time, people would come once and then never come back because <laughs> the quality of the food, the quality of the food was so bad. I mean, I don't so want to, I don't want to mm -hmm. like, I, I don't want to say for sure, but we I know think, what you're going to say. I think <laughs> call it done. I think I might never eat here again myself. I mean, I, I will never <laughs> eat here again, but that it's just too far and weird. Um, <laughs> if I if I was in Fazoli stomping grounds, I could wander my way through. I'm not. That's You're not a shame insane. to say that. That is fine. Exact, Michael. What what you just said is exactly how Nick described it to me before <laughs> everyone got here. I'm like, I would never come here and eat. He's like, right. But if there was nothing else, and you were like in, within like a mile, you'd be like, whatever. There's Fazoli's. I guess I'll just eat here. And I'm like, I. Guess so. No, I would. I, I would go to Chick Fil A I first. I would go to Water Burger first. I would even maybe entertain Arby's. Wow. I think. But I probably think I'd not. be like. I'd be like ah, Fazoli's. The odds are too, someone would be here that didn't know what the hell it was, and I'd say uh -huh. you gotta try the pasta and the pizza. You gotta get the meatball Da Vinci. <laughs> the meatball Da Vinci. <laughs> Uh, get it? Okay. I I just like that they. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. Oh man, when you're dead, people can do anything with your name. Yeah. <laughs> all they all they had to do was wait. Yep, smart. Some some fuckers like, oh, Da Vinci's been dead forever. What's he gonna do about it? <laughs> Nothing. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine if they tried to call it like the Michael Jordan meatball? Yeah. They'd be impossible. <laughs> I don't know why I just picked Michael Jordan off the top of my head. Not Crazy. that like it's anything to do with uh -huh. like you know potentially right. being sued or anything. Uh -huh. But fuck it, throw Da Vinci in there. Oh, uh, dude, have you tried the Jesus Christ uh, breadsticks? They're amazing. They're a little cross. Yeah, Jesus. Breadsticks. People didn't know this. He liked cheese on all of his food. <laughs> um. All right. Next fact. If you're an experienced eater, you can join Fazoli's Club Sixty Two. A senior citizen discount program that allows you to eat spaghetti with a salad on Wednesdays. This is great news for our audience, and we're proud to be able to help them find a family-friendly restaurant to bring their grandchildren for supper. Not That's dinner. Good. Supper. Very That's good. Nice. Supper. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Eric, that was nice. You were thinking of the people there. Uh, that's, yeah. That was one where we had to take a break from the joking and we need to just let our audience to, know. Really help mm -hmm. the jammers. You, you're, you, listen, your grandson wants a slice of pizza and, you, and he mm -hmm. can have that. But if you bring him on a Wednesday with Club 62, you get a spaghetti and a salad. And what else could you want? That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, is it called Club 62 because you need to be 62 to join? Yes, that is exactly what it is. Okay. <laughs> Before Just I got to sure. the senior citizen part, I was intrigued, mm -hmm. and then I was yeah, no longer well, intrigued. Mostly because he put experienced eater in that quotation is, marks. That is what they call it. They call they say that Club 62 is an experienced eater program. I, I think that just means you're still in the game. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, if you're not dead yet, you've been eating this long. Club. You made it this far. I, I'm only 29, and it might be brash of me to say this, but I feel like I'm a pretty experienced eater myself. Uh, I don't know. I think this oh, it, is not It's not your rookie year, and I understand that, <laughs> but it's also like you haven't been in the league long enough to like of, like to get out of arbitration. Like you're stuck with like your entry level team. So yeah. sorry, man. I've, you got I've you got to get rookie like, deal. Get another 30 years on you. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> if you're an experienced eater at the age of 62, they're gonna go in there and ask you like. You ever eat mud? And they'd be like, mud! For five years I ate mud. And they'd be like, all right, that's experience. Right there. Um, the final fact. For a few years, Fazoli's had the sweetheart deal. Uh-oh, I'm looking at Nick. Offered free oh. spaghetti for a year if you got engaged inside Fazoli's on Valentine's Day. I could not find any evidence that anyone has done this, uh, but if you have... Please keep that information to yourself because that's so pathetic it should embarrass you to your core. Well, Nick, he looks embarrassed. Nah, he's shaking his head no. See, the thing is, he fucked up. He did it, but it wasn't Valentine's Day. Oh, that was yeah. no. Yeah. He missed it. He missed it's, it. A real, it's a real twofold, yep. it's a yeah. two pronged thing. And I was it's like, oh, yeah, 15th, anyone could do right? that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Sir, it's June 2nd, so we're going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my spaghetti? <laughs> Could you imagine that that is the thing that entices you? Spaghetti 
for a year. Spaghetti. For a year? That's not bad, dude. What? I'll give you I'll give you one hundred dollars and that mm -hmm. will feed you spaghetti for a year. Yeah, spaghetti is like a dollar ten yeah. a pound. And a it's pound not, of spaghetti is a lot really of fucking it spaghetti. <laughs> it might even be two pounds. Think hey, about dude, it. Dude, spaghetti is fucking cheap. And then when you make it, you go, I don't know, I'm pretty hungry. Let me throw more in there. And then you come back and you go, where the fuck did all the spaghetti come from? <laughs> oh, no, these gremlins who are tightening my shirts have put too much the spaghetti in the The water gremlins made my spaghetti big. Yeah. <laughs> first, they looked small and they didn't fill yeah. the pot up. And now the pot's overflowing with it. I thought, what am I going to eat a couple of sticks? Throw some more in. <laughs> and then somebody replaced my sticks with pasta. Yeah. <laughs> it's thick, dude. Uh. Baguettes? So what did you guys, you guys learn a lot about Fizzoli's? I learned I, some stuff, yeah. I mean, more than yes. I knew, which was zero. Right. This so, sweetheart so, deal thing. So you would say that this was a fact section where you got good facts, where you learned about Fizzoli's. Um, you could say that. I, I'll, I'll, I'll bend to that. You know more about Fizzoli's than you did at the beginning. This is the part where Eric says I made all this up. I didn't make any of this up. These are all, <laughs> these are all Fizzoli's facts. Uh, I feel like you made some of it up. But... Facts Zoli's. <laughs> should have called it that. Damn it. He should have called it that, but then again, he should have put the right sponsor in the copy as well. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, yeah. we'll get into the doghouse facts. Maybe we'll learn something, and maybe the audience will learn something too. Fact number one, boasting more than just run-of-the-mill hot dogs, doghouse offers a variety of plant-based, impossible, and beyond meat options so everyone can enjoy. Wow, that's great. Eric's, I I can't see his face, but it looked like he was leaning <laughs> into Jordan. Like, how do you like oh, that? Yeah. He he's like he's doing the thing where it's like, eh, eh. Good fact. I thought that was a very good fact, Jordan. Then you guys you can have your vegan. Everyone yeah. can have a, a vegan meal. And I you gotta can eat say, a hot dog. I gotta say, I kind of got in trouble because I told my wife, who is vegan, uh -huh. uh, where I was going, and she was like, "Oh, I'll look this place up," and she found the impossible and beyond meat options and she was like so when you go pick me up something and then yesterday <laughs> um, i reminded her that the episode was was happening and she's like oh don't uh -huh. forget to get me something and i was like i got bad news <laughs> <laughs> oh eric's gonna what's go the, get it we're gonna meet in the parking news? lot <laughs> oh. <laughs> then i'm gonna feed him a hot dog in a parking lot oh. <laughs> now and i was like i don't i don't know if i can get eric to get you something <laughs> yeah now let me let me ask you this. Uh -huh. Is this impossible and Beyond Meat? Yes. Or impossible they, yeah. Are they? Are they? What's the difference between no, no. the two? Beyond They're two different brands. One, impossible is the other. Oh. What? What is? Very what rarely does a restaurant carry both. Yep. What? What's the difference? I'm confused. It's just that it's their name brands. It's just it's Coke and Pepsi. They, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. So, okay. I find I All find right. Impossible is a little is a little more authentic and tastes a little better. Has a little mm. more flavor. Well, if you go here, you can just get a regular hot dog. Oh yeah, I'm just saying for the times where I'm forced to. I'll say this too though, to just from these. like a layman's term, impossible sounds more impressive. I agree. How'd you make that? It's impossible. We just did. Yeah. Here we are. You know, and, going beyond isn't as nearly as impressive as yeah, yeah and, impossible. And the name beyond meat also implies that there's a bed meat and a bath meat. <laughs> I'm gonna give him <laughs> okay. that one. I like that. I like that a lot. I just had the funniest interaction where, like, I watched Eric think about it, come to the conclusion that he liked it. But so I'm next to Eric and then Jordan's next to him. But Jordan's a little behind, like, parked. <laughs> so I can't see him. So Eric was smiling. And then I slowly saw Jordan's head peek up to check yeah. on us to see, to see if we liked his joke. <laughs> he was like, guys, did you laugh? I didn't see. Oh, they're laughing. Okay. I liked it. It, it took good. me a second. I came around. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Right. Uh, I read a tweet, so. Oh, Jesus. Never mind. That's not joke. my joke. Next, Next fact. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Founded by friends Hagop Girogosian, Quasim Riaz, and Andre v Wiener, the first <laughs> doghouse opened in Pasadena in 2010. Um, these names are more of a mouthful than those hot dogs. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh I think I tried to Dumb. romance Hagop Garek Gossin in uh Mass Effect 2. Oh shit. <laughs> I was excited wow, when Nick I saw the names. 
I was excited when I saw the it's names because I knew either Jor- I knew Jordan was going to read them or I knew Michael was going to read them, but I knew someone was going to read them. So I was excited. Nobody was going to yeah get yeah. this right. I was going to say, like, usually I'm the one struggling with the names in, yep. the, uh, in the press section, but These Jesus are up there. Christ. Yep. Yeah, those are some names. Where do you think Hagup's name is from? <laughs> Hagup. I don't know. It's probably a super common name in Pasadena. <laughs> if I, um, <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about Hagup from Pasadena? Which one? <laughs> yeah. Can you be a little more specific? We're out of Hagup license plates. <laughs> Doghouse partnered with Michelin star chefs in a series of collabs bringing new food to the restaurant called Kick Ass Chefs. I have a similar collab called Eat Ass Chefs, oh but God. no one will allow us in any establishment as of this writing. <laughs> Now let me ask you this, Eric. Yeah. Was this was this fact sheet? Was this a late night or an early morning? This was like uh this was like an afternoon yesterday because I went ah shit my Tuesdays oh my, God. my Tuesdays I'll, I know I had to get my homework done on time <laughs> which is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like the first time in history. That raises yeah. even more questions because yep. you get you get to this first line is like kick ass chefs and then the thought process I imagine is how do I riff off this? Uh-huh. Uh I could yeah, go they, anywhere. They, they, yeah, I well, can really do anything with this. How about that, eat ass? Yeah, I, the what yeah. you just did was probably three times as long as it took me to come up with <laughs> oh. ass chefs. I don't think you probably <laughs> I, wrote. Yeah. You probably finished writing ass. So it was like eat ass. That's the next yep, line. Went, I'm already writing it. it. Yep. <laughs> In a section of their website titled "We Keep Our Meat Clean." <laughs> Doghouse asserts that their sausages are 100% nitrate and antibiotic free. Wiener Schnitzel has kind of the same thing, but it's a link to that clip from The Simpsons where they show hot dogs being made from a rat tail, raccoon hands, a pigeon head, and the tongue of a boot for some reason? Why would they do that? <laughs> oh, man. Wiener Schnitzel's a weird place, guys. Yeah, no, and like I said, it's it the thing the thing that lost points for Wiener Schnitzel for me is like mm-hmm. they're a hot dog place. Yeah. There's not a lot of hot dog places or a place you can get a hot dog. Yeah, they Austin. pretty sure much said this in cornered. The they got yeah. the market. You get a the hot market, dog at yeah. Sonic, you know, yeah. you go to Sonic. It's not great, but it's mm-hmm. Sonic. I, I guess it's a burger joint first, but they got burger, they got chicken, they got a it's ton of name. sides, like right. onion rings. Mozzarella sticks, uh, jalapeno poppers. They got a lot of yeah. variety. You, you don't expect them to do everything well, including the hot right. dogs. Right. But Wiener Schnitzel, all they got is hot dogs, and they were yep. not great. Okay? It was disappointing. Uh, and yep. I believe I rated them low. So I'm glad you're really digging into them here. They deserve it. Uh, I hope they feel bad. They should feel bad. <laughs> and maybe if they listen to our episode, they can clean up their act a little bit. <laughs> Final fact. CNN ranked Doghouse as one of the top five places to eat a hot dog in the United States. Looking at the rest of the list, it was unfortunately beat out by first place, quote, at home, and runner-up, not anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Nick's dying over there. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. Top five places to eat a hot dog in the United States is so specific where did, and so wide. Yeah. Where did yeah. in a hot tub rank? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity. I think it was probably an honorable mention. Hot dog in a hot tub? That makes sense. <laughs> well, you could cook them while you sat in the hot tub. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Nick was Whoa. really into that idea. <laughs> he's like, he, he's like, I'm eating one. I dive <laughs> down. I get some more. Uh-oh. I you go gotta, bobbing for hot dogs. It's got to fish around a little bit. Grab one, take a bite. Uh-oh, that's not a hot dog. I forgot I wasn't alone. <laughs> oh, no. Well, what did you guys think about the facts? Did you learn a lot about Doghouse? Um, I learned that I guess other people had heard of them before. Uh-huh. Yeah, and apparently it's a top five place to eat a hot dog. Yeah, not not top five hot dog. No. No, just... But top five place to eat a hot yeah. dog. Can I make a hot they dog actually, at home and bring it yeah, to Doghouse yes, and just enjoy the atmosphere? They actually recommend you bring a hot dog, yeah, from yeah. from an outside <laughs> vendor. Don't but, eat the fucking they, hot dogs, But they give them please. to you in case you forget yours. Right. Yeah. Just in case. BYOD. <laughs> um, okay, should we get in some facts? Yeah, let's learn about something. Yeah, All right. Teach me. Prepare to be taught. 
started in Ohio in 1982. The original name of the restaurant was Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck. Weck being a regional sandwich from Buffalo that was offered at the restaurant in the beginning. What's in a Weck? It's a, uh, it's like a, almost like a Kaiser roll kind of a thing, but it's salted with, oh, some kind of seed on the top. And oh. then it's like an au jus dip, kind of like a French dip sandwich. The reason they use that bread is because it holds up a little bit. Um, huh. So it's just, it's like an au jus French dip thing, but it's like a buffalo thing. And so when they started this restaurant, they're like, buffalo, right? And also it was called BW3. That was the shortening of it because it was buffalo, oh. wild wings, wild wings and, and whack. Whack. So it was oh. B, it, everywhere I saw it written was BW3. And I went, oh, that's weird. Really Weck is a horrible name for a sandwich. Yeah, I yeah. think it's, I feel well, like I mean, I think it's like German it. or something. Right. It also, Whack. it just makes me think of wet. Yes. Yeah, which, like he's which, talking about the fair, new flavor. It is. The sandwich right. is wet. You <laughs> yeah, dip it. It's made to get so, wet. You're yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to get it wet. So you can call it wet. A wet whack. Do you think they thought that would be the big thing? People would go, they're coming for the wings and wecks? And yeah. I guess oh, it just yeah. didn't, it didn't, Gotta get my whack on. It was a small, you know, it starts as like a small restaurant. This isn't like a Long John Silver's, hey, we just started as like a franchise thing. Like How it dare was a you restaurant, just like you would go to any place here. Right? We're trying to destroy them. Yeah, and I yeah, am we from the inside them. out. We hate them. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it's a restaurant and you offer, because if they offered just wings, <laughs> if you offered just wings, it's not enough uh -huh. to be a restaurant. So it's like, here's a sandwich also. So people are like, oh. into that. So then what they did was when they blew up, they sold Weck out. They're like, we don't need we don't need you anymore. They took Weck out back. <laughs> well, I think they, they, whacked it. they whacked the Weck. <laughs> Stupid. Um, okay, oh, here's a here's a fun fact. Uh -huh. One time, my friend Brian ate like 45 wings in one sitting. <laughs> That's, what flavor? Uh, uh, they were probably a lot of different ones, right? There, there, there were a few different ones. I remember specifically how it looked because when they brought him the wings, it was fine. But then, as he was finishing them, he would pile the bones into oh. like a little oh, container. Oh, he didn't do boneless. Yeah, he did oh bone my in. God, and so he was like cleaning the bones and putting them in the container. And he wouldn't let him take the container away because he went, no, this is the chicken graveyard. And he kept oh, fucking stacking no. them up. And so he really... ordered 45 at once and was no, just no, like, no. You, I'm a you know, you order like he just 20 kept going. and then you order 15 and then you do like gotcha. another 10, you know? Gotcha, um, gotcha. So he, he was eating them and just kind of like slamming them down, slamming them down. And then when you look at the pile of bones, it really made you go like... Yeah, well, oh we're, all gonna, we're all going to die someday, huh? And he went, yep, just like these chickens. And he's like, here's the graveyard. That had to be a mess too, right? Because you're probably dealing with like a couple little bones per wing, yeah. right? Yeah, because, like you three. know, there's drum, there's like drumstick, but then you have like the flat, oh. so you got to like crack it and shit. So. Yep. Why? Yeah. A lot of chickens died for that meal. That's, I mean, probably not that many chickens, honestly. They're pretty small. <laughs> <laughs> There's little balls. <laughs> but he, these were bone in. How many bones does a chicken have? Four or five? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe they was there like a shrink ray going on? How do oh, you I didn't think like a regular that. chicken and are they just mm -hmm. killing baby chickens or how do they Can't get the you. how do they get the bones little? Oh. Well, I think that's just how chicken bones are, maybe. No. What? <laughs> How big do you think chickens are? I like I like when they breed the boneless chickens because That's, then uh -huh. I can yeah. just eat them straight. I pluck them right out of the egg, <laughs> <laughs> crack it open, eat em, suck eat it down. Raw. I suck it down. I I dip them in some mango habanero and I suck them down. They Easy scream stuff. on the way down, but the <laughs> screaming stops when they hit my stomach acid. <laughs> it turns into like a slow like bloop, 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 like a bubble pop. In like that's a swamp, what, and then that's what and my burps are. Well, burps when are the, you streams. see you see the bubble come up, mm -hmm. right? It's like it pops, and then their soul comes back out <laughs> up my throat and out my mouth. <laughs> I don't know if Pete is gonna uh, approve of this bit. I don't think they would approve of this show. <laughs> they, dude. Here's the thing. I, they're super cool. Pete is cool. <laughs> They're just so nice. Here's uh, the thing. I like I like when I get a letter and it's I open it and I go, oh, it's a good, it's a decapitated cat's head. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, and it, and it says this is your fault. 
And it's written in blood. Yeah, you did this. And they're like, don't worry, this blood is from a baby human, not a cat. <laughs> but but we did cut the cat's head off because we couldn't find a good enough picture. <laughs> but this cat died for the cause. <laughs> uh, anyway, B Dubs yes, is the largest purveyor of draft beer in the United States, selling everything from Budweiser to local craft beers. By the numbers, if you're a craft beer guy, there's no better place to show off your expertise in beer than your local Buffalo Wild Wings, where you can quickly become known as that guy. <laughs> Damn, dude. So you go there and you just start, like, picking up other just, like, fat dudes eating wings <laughs> and drinking beer. <laughs> hey, want to know about this beer? I don't know. I'm just saying I, I know the good. demographic of that place. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not really a place you go to show off. You know, I'm going to, oh, what are you doing? I'm going to go pick up some ladies tonight. Where are you going? Buffalo Wild Wings? <laughs> There's probably some singles there. Right. I'm trying to help them. I'm trying to give them like a, I'm trying to give them like an old school TGI Fridays feel. You know what I mean? Like you got to be a singles pickup place and maybe beer guys can be the first ones there. And then everyone else will flock there to learn about. Right. Beer. And there's just a bunch of beer guys yeah. <laughs> telling each other about beer. Yeah. Jerking each like, other off and going, yeah. who the hops? Yeah, this one's too hoppy. It's not hoppy enough. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> but then what happens is they, you know, this one doesn't taste like guys, a 78. Guys, <laughs> calm down. Have 20 or 30 more wings. <laughs> Chill out. We're adults. Okay. Oh, man. The IBUs are off the charts. <laughs> Then the souls start flying all around the room. It's like Ghostbusters. It's like the library scene. <laughs> Things are and flying then off like the shelves. And like the little baby chicken souls. There's just baby chickens screaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, after struggling financially for a few years, Buffalo Wild Wings was sold to Rourke Capital Group, the parent company that is credited with turning around Arby's due to COVID restrictions. I, Eric, was unable to enter the B-Dubs restroom to see if I could get my dick melted but we will have to assume that <laughs> that is the new game plan until we are allowed to independently verify. Yeah, that's just Damn. the go-to for them. Yeah, they I mean, immediately I just install super hot urinals. <laughs> yeah, you figure they're they're testing it out in that like that Colorado Arby's or whatever. Uh, see, oh. get the yeah, they're just the test melted. market. And then now the Rourke uh, Financial Group was like, "Hmm, I'm buying other restaurants. What other dicks can I melt?" And that's uh, oh, the way it works. Shit. I would think. They would. They probably. They think they're going for like a certain dickographic. Uh, like we yeah, want to melt dicks of all I, shapes, sizes, no, to be fair, colors, and creeds. I think it's probably beer guys. I think they're oh, trying okay. to get beer guys in to melt <laughs> their dicks. This is trying to just nip them in the bud. <laughs> nip them in the dick. <laughs> There's just too many of you. Come to come to Buffalo Wild Wings. Have some beer. Eat thirty or forty wings, and then get your dick melted. <laughs> so <laughs> that's their end goal. <laughs> that, 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 that when when Buffalo Wild Wings goes out of business because there's uh -huh. no more beer guys, they've right. done their job. They, they, <laughs> they, <laughs> we did it. They flipped that sign from open to close for the last time, and the CEO smiles. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> oh man! Finally, the last fact: in 2017, there was a rumor that Buffalo Wild Wings store policy was to turn down the volume when the national anthem was playing, and that this new company policy started. On 9-11. Interesting. This is like a McMillions tie-in. B-Dubs released yeah. a statement claiming it has no such policy, but if that's true, then why do I turn down the volume on all TVs in the restaurant every Thursday night before the football game starts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do you? Check <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> That's a real, like, uh, according to rumors, I'm starting yeah. <laughs> right. situation. Yeah. There was, he's right. There though. was a We're, guy. What's the answer? So there was a guy in California, worked at Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> who would turn down the volume, the national anthem. And then when people would go, why are you doing that? He would go, it's store policy. <laughs> so then on the internet, people were like, what the fuck is with this? Buffalo Wild Wings what? heard about it because everyone picked up on it and they said, there's no such policy. We don't know what the fuck is going on. The CMO, the guy who like runs those chains out there or whatever went, that guy's no longer with the company. He's let go before the statement's even released. We don't know why he did that and we wish he never did. <laughs> Whoa. Well, Eric, I just got to say, why did you do it then? Yeah, when did you work at B-Dubs? 
I didn't have to. Another another brave <laughs> American started that. <laughs> I'm simply following suit by walking into I say waiting all day for Sunday night and I turn it down <laughs> Eric right before the national in, anthem. He walked start. in and they went they went, Who turned down this volume again? And Eric stood up and said, I'm Spartacus. <laughs> 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 Anywho, Buffalo Wild Wings. There you go. Those are those are just the facts. Much like the restaurant, I don't retain. I'm not retaining any of that information. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, he he went in swinging on fact number two with his friend Brian eight forty five wings. Usually, that'd be closer to the bottom. I think you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, I wanted to let you know about the Brian thing. Pretty okay. Uh, like I, off the top. That's, I honestly, that's when I was worried, and I was like, "Does he have any facts? What do you mean? If, These are all facts. I'm just the saying. The largest. He, excuse me. The he largest purveyor getting, of draft beer." Being sold to the Arby's group. I mean, I, I I read it. I know. I just read it. If the story of Brian eating forty five wings is true, it's probably the most factual fact he's ever told on this show. That and and I just can't imagine Eric has the uh, just the capacity to invent the whole weck thing. That's got to be true too. It seems a little above his pay grade. I still I still think it's a typo. If he told me he made that sandwich up, I would be like, oh, I bought it. I didn't I never yeah. heard of it. It just seems yeah. like what an uninteresting name, right? Like I would have come up with something better than what. <laughs> yeah. It just <laughs> sounds like something you just plop down. I Wax. just Wax. assumed it was real and I just kept yeah. nodding when he was describing <laughs> sure, it. Sure, yeah. He, and he's Wax. like, and then, you know, it's like the the bread and then you can dip in it. I'm going, uh -huh. Uh -huh. like, you could have had me at three three, four words tops uh -huh. and I was uh -huh. sold. But mm -hmm. anyway. Anyway, um, I look forward to people from Buffalo being like, I can't believe they've never heard of a weck before. Boy. Huh? Right. Well, we should be, uh... Let's learn. Let's learn a little bit about Golden Chick. It. Diving into the facts. Here we go. Opened in 1967. The Whoa. first Golden Chick restaurant was located in San Marcos, Texas, which is just about an hour south of us. It's true. Is isn't that crazy? Us, us, the United States, or us collectively? No, no, us, the specific, no, us, us like specifically in Austin. In, be he, in between here and San Antonio, right? Yeah, We're probably a little closer to San Antonio. Yeah. It's about where you pull I think over. San Antonio is about ninety minutes. Yeah, just about. Yeah, that's and then you can protect the Alamo from those people. Mm. What? The I'm not fuck? sure who they are, but my dad keeps telling me, so we'll figure <laughs> oh. it out one day. Well, is anyone st still trying to take the Alamo? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it seems like if you turn on the news. Seems like they might be, but I just don't know who or I've why. seen the news, and I don't quite uh -huh. understand what's happening. There's uh -huh. some people saying this and that, and mm -hmm. people say, yay, and then other people go, no, I win. And I don't really understand it. But <laughs> I've seen people, it's weird, there's a guy saying he won, mm -hmm. but he didn't win. Mm -hmm. But then people like the guy who said he won that didn't win, and they say, hey, we'll turn this into another Alamo. I've seen yeah. that. And uh -huh. then I think... But they lost. They lost. <laughs> and right. So it's yeah. all very confusing. <laughs> yeah. Just try and take it. Try try and take it like you tried to take the Alamo. The Alamo and then they did. They did. And did successfully right. very easily. Uh -huh. It's it's all very confusing stuff. Yeah. And then a lot of times there's like graphics we, on the screen and, uh -huh. and there's still voiceover going, and I just lose it because I can't see the person talking. <laughs> so they're, I'm they're out gone. at that point. I'm going, where go back to the desk. I need, I need an extreme close up on the anchor as they read to I me. Just, I just want to see lips and teeth. That's yeah, all that's... I want to see. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't need, need the to whole know head. Where the mouth is that's right. making the sounds. I want to see your like the tongue and how yeah. you're making the L like the old sounds. When the guy does the weather, I can really follow along. But then when he turns his back to the camera and he's where'd pointing, he go? I don't know what who. Where's the voice coming you know, from? You know what it I could call be that? somebody else. You know what I call that when the guy turns away from the camera and he's still talking? A jump scare. Oh, fuck. Because I didn't see it coming. <laughs> All of a sudden, my pants are wet. <laughs> <laughs> my brain is fried, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> But then he turns back around and all's right in the world. It's so. all good. And then you, it was, it's like, it's like when he turns back around and you go, oh, it was just a cat. Yep. <laughs> oh, fuck. It wasn't I, the I killer. like to point out the irony of the, the phrase, remember the Alamo, when uh -huh. so many people seem to forget exactly what <laughs> happened at the Alamo. <laughs> I and why we're about, supposed to remember it. I kept thinking they were talking about the movies. Yeah, the, and I the was draft like, house, yeah. I was just like, are they national? Like, yeah. they're not in every state. <laughs> they got a couple here and there, but yeah, I mean, if we're yeah. going to make another Alamo, like, yep. yeah, that'd be fine with me. Let's get some more draft houses up in here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was good. 
we should move past the first fact. <laughs> Although known for their chicken, Golden Chick has a wide variety of offerings from dirty rice to fried okra and corn nuggets. They also have something called hot yeast rolls, which look like biscuits, but sound like a yeast infection. So that's that's what we had, right? We had that's one what of those. We ate. Yeah. I took a bite of it and I thought, this tastes weird. And I said, this tastes weird. And Nick went, tastes like alcohol. And I was like, it tastes like beer. This tastes like a beer roll. And not particularly good. It was just kind of like, it was like someone had a roll and then they spilled beer on it. That's exactly what it tasted <laughs> like. You know what I mean? Not yeah. like, ooh, the beer enriched flavor. It was just like, uh -uh. why does this taste like that? Did you keep it's this in a fridge next to an open beer? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> wow. It's, it's all your least favorite ingredient of beer in bread form. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just wish when I was eating it, there was more foam. Uh, yeah, it's true. I you wish know? it was foamier. That's the only thing that would have made it, it better. Get a nice head on that hot yeast roll. <laughs> it tasted, it tasted like a kolache, but had nothing in it. Oh. It's like, this is the worst part of a kolache. It was wacky. So, they have that. You can buy that, I guess. They gave it to you free. I didn't even oh, order that. that. That makes sense. That's yeah, why. They just, they just, just giving them away. First step with a kolache, I rip it. I rip it open like mm. a like a package, and I go. I'm not taking two wasteful bites. Give me the goddamn hot dog, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know that, that you, sucker's you clip, in there. Clip the edges. That's the crust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. In September of this year, that is 2020, the year of our Lord. Golden Chick paired with Fletcher's original corny dogs to sell corn dogs for a limited time. That ended in late October, and there's probably one guy in his car listening to this right now, pissed. That we didn't eat corn dogs. You're stuck in Fort Worth traffic, Josh. Chill out. You really dialed in on that. <laughs> I, I I really wanted to see. There's one. I want to see if it if it works. If there's one guy listening and he's on his way to work and his name is Josh and he goes, oh, what the fuck? That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Damn, dude. I, I might have given it to you, but going with Josh is pretty slim odds. That's it, hey, you yeah. know. I, it you should have you you gone with your Connor. Shot, you know? That's it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm like, not shooting for I feel like Connor would have been a higher percentage. Ooh, Connor's pretty I, I good. I feel like Mike would have been a better percentage because there's 40 billion. I was gonna go with Mike, but then I went too specific to you. I think you would get confused. No, not if you said Mike. No That's true. Would, only fools yeah. would confuse. Only mm -hmm. people who think they're friends with me. That's right. Would confuse it. Hey, what's yeah. up, Mike? Oh, hey, yeah, Mike. You, and yeah, you said it, Mike. Mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> mm, wow. Hey, Mike, love the podcast. Oh, yeah. we're friends. Yeah, okay. we're, we're We must be. You called me Mike. Yeah, I've been listening name. to you for 10 years. None of your friends call you that. Hey, Mike, what's up? <laughs> oh, cool. Whoa. Whoa. Did you just come up with that? <laughs> Wait, can I use that? Is that, a, is, stuff. That a, is that a nickname? Yeah. What the? <laughs> what the darn heck? It's a Mike name. Yep. Wow. Whoa. Um, <laughs> his name's Nick. <laughs> Eric's all over the place. Golden Chick claims to have invented the Golden Tender, a hand battered and deep fried chicken tenderloin in 1985, and that all the quote big guys are copying them, which is a bold claim from a restaurant most of our audience just found out existed roughly 21 minutes ago <laughs> when this episode started. You got to take close, close. Yeah, right. You got to take five minutes off the top because we started. No, yeah. it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be very close. Yeah, yeah. I felt. I felt that really. A, that was a really good guess. Sometimes, hey man, this is what I'm talking about. With jo if Josh and Fort Worth yeah. happens, I'm two for two. You're shooting a lot of shots. I don't want to give him all the credit though. It explains why he bumped up the ghost segment because he knew oh. he had to kill time. No, oh, I don't know. Well, what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I don't no, know. Yeah. I don't know what you guys no. are talking about. I thought he was really excited about the ghost thing. He was excited about that 21 minute call. That's no. Oh, I was excited about ghosts. Now it makes me wonder, like, you know, the sanctity of this episode. How much of it is, like, producer <laughs> influ oh, influence? he's just pulling strings, dude. He's pulling yeah. strings. It's like one of the things people liked about Great British Bake Off in the early seasons is that there was not a lot of producer intervention. And later uh -huh. seasons, people are saying, I think they're starting to mess with the formula here. Yeah, so. but did you see that guy who made the Tom DeLonge cake? That was pretty ugly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it's. I, I don't guy. think anybody helped him with that. <laughs> I started questioning what the producers were doing when they killed Mary Berry. That's right. And I was just like, hang on. <laughs> they, you know, they were. Well, it, yeah, if you watch, she's not in the show anymore. They killed her off. They, and I was they, like, yeah, they killed her off. Is this a narrative? It's fucking crazy. Is this, yep. Did they just. She fell down? It or? was a big arc in like series three, I think. 
Oh, it was. I think it was way further than that. <laughs> um, they started hinting at it. If you if you go back and right, watch, you, you can, can see, see the writings on the wall. Right, mm-hmm. you can see um, Paul becoming the villain. There's like a glint, yeah. there's like a certain glint in his eye. His his you know? like he starts tanning more and his hair gets whiter somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he starts doling out fewer handshakes. You can't trust a guy named Paul Hollywood who's from England. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. Hey, what's up? My uh, name's Eric London, and I'm from <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> and now, what you've all been waiting for: the final fact. Do-do-do-do-do-do. It was like a oh, that was okay. cool. millionaire. Thing. Okay, and yeah, all the like lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Remember millionaire? Anyway, you, yeah. you yeah. rest in peace, it's Regis. Funny. Oh, because he could be a fan. That's right. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Regis! I think, I, I think Regis! Jake just found out Regis Philbin died. <laughs> he oh, you went, didn't know? He went, oh. I forgot. <laughs> oh, no. Now you're, now you're reopening old wounds. <laughs> Sorry. Stop. Golden, well, I can't Chick wait. Is owned <laughs> by, Golden Chick is owned by a conglomerate called Golden Tree Restaurants. Some of their what? sister restaurants include... Hef's Burgers, Taco Plaza, Jalapeno Tree, JC's Burger House, Texadelphia, and Fireside Pies. I made up one of those restaurants, but which one? It's it's obviously JC's Burger House. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Texadelphia is real. I mean, Jalapeno Tree. <laughs> that one's pretty good. I'd eat there. I don't know. JC's Burger House. Better be fake because I have a uh, patent pending for that name. Oh, <laughs> oh I think you might why. get a patent denied. That's a real one. <laughs> Whoa! No! Yeah. What's made up? I made oh, up tree. Taco Plaza. Oh, Taco. yeah. Because that sounds like more of a restaurant than Jalapeno Tree. <laughs> it sure does, dude. And also, yeah. when you say Hef's Burgers, I just yeah. thought of Rocco's Modern Life. Me, me too. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That's exactly what I thought. Man. Look at us. Where are these? Where are these? That's weird. Located? Were your kids watching that show? You're a little older for that audience, right? I was like where 10 when it came kids? out, so you uh-huh. were. Uh huh. 31, 32. <laughs> uh, and those are just the facts. That's it. My uncle worked on that show on Rockers Modern Life. He... Rockers? Is that a different <laughs> show? Yeah, Rockers Modern Life. Yeah. Well, it was, well it's Rocco from Rockers Modern Life, but it's kind of like he starts a band. It's different. Rockers. <laughs> did he, did he, he worked on that? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What would he do? Uh, the I think pre-visualization stuff. I I don't remember, but he just got done. He still works in. He worked on the fucking Spider-Man movie, the Enter the Two Realms. What's yeah, it into, the Spider-verse. <laughs> into the Spider Verse. Into the Spider Verse. Enter the Two <laughs> Realms. <laughs> Enter the Two Realms is right. It, it was a weird Lord of the Rings that was crossover. The, also, that was the budget version. Like, what about a multiverse? <laughs> well, we'll just do two. <laughs> just two. I, I couldn't remember. I like that movie. I just couldn't remember the name. <laughs> Enter the two realms. <laughs> um, two realms. We need, we facts. need facts. Love it. Let's get on to the Boston Market facts. Do, 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 do. Founded in 1985, Boston Market went IPO Damn in it. 1993. What? It's supposed Founded? to went. Went to oh, yeah. you didn't. He also that. used. He also I, used the wrong uh, possessive. I, it's. I, I noticed that also. <laughs> Start. Let's start over. Take, but it's okay. This is the real fact. So take two. Okay, that's fine. And take two, but make sure take one stays in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I thought it was because of my drink I just had before we started. It's <laughs> just, just what you wrote. Um, founded in 1985, Boston Market went IPO in 1993 and doubled its stock price on its very first day of trading. Whoa. What did it, what it, did it open it at? It, yeah. Uh, I don't remember, but it closed way high, up over 140%. That, like, Dang. that eclipsed, like, Chipotle when it went IPO later. Uh, other restaurants have gone IPO and haven't touched what Boston Market did on day one. In 1993, day one, Boston Market fucking making cash. Can you believe yeah, that? Yeah, making cash. This is crazy. Very well. Very promising future. Looking good. Uh, mm-hmm. Sky's the limit, 1993. Fact uh-huh. number two. Boston Market filed for bankruptcy in 1998 because, quote, grocery stores started selling rotisserie chicken. 
I had similar bankruptcy issues with my failed business venture. I'll drive you around while I talk to you about my movie, about my life that has been seriously so crazy. It should really be a movie, and that's why I'm writing it. What's your email? Because Uber came in and destroyed me. <laughs> I thought it was a sketchy name, and nobody yeah. nobody took me up on it. What's yeah. that acronym to? Mm. Let me... Someone will have to figure it out, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's why I had to file for bankruptcy. Wow. The two reasons. Five years. <laughs> yeah, could you believe that? Yeah. Like, they went doubling their stock price, and then all of a sudden, 1998, and they just went, we're fucked. We're fucked. Well, we're sounds fucked. like they either, got, <laughs> they either got too big for their britches, or they were already desperate, they, and they were like, we'll go IPO, and maybe it'll like cover some of our debts, and it wasn't enough. They were making a lot of money, and then they went IPO, and they were making a ton. They overexpanded and kept citing the money that they would get from their franchisees as pure profit <laughs> instead oh of, God. like, yeah, instead of, like, this is the foundation of our business, oh. and we're growing slowly. They're just like, all this money coming in is just profit, and then they didn't help their franchisees, and then five years later, boom, bankrupt. And they had to, they had to shut, like, more than half their, like, half their stores at that point. Damn. Yeah. Tell me about your movie, Eric. Oh. Listen, my life is so crazy, guys. It's so wild. It's just mm -hmm. like all these things happen to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got to, I haven't written it yet, but it's uh -huh. just but like it's in all your head. good. I yeah. And it's just like when I tell people about it, they go, oh, that should be a movie. And I'm constantly telling people about Who it. Who do you see so playing, playing the main character? Oh, anyone. Ben oh, wow. Affleck. Matt oh, Damon. so this is like a Boston. Oh yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Canadian thing. Yeah, Canadian all, all, thing. all of them are Canadian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Danny Rick DeVito. Moranis, maybe Rick Moranis is back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, somebody's so punching those him in the guys. head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's okay. They got him. They got that guy. They got him. They Michael him. B. Jordan, Canadian, huh? Yeah, something different. I didn't know that. In 2000, <laughs> McDonald's purchased Boston Market with the intent of gutting locations and using the real estate for other business <laughs> businesses, like buying a racehorse to sell it to the glue factory. <laughs> However, McDonald's found that Boston Market was still viable and continued to operate the business for seven years, like finding out your glue horse has a couple of raises left in him and knowing you can always turn him into glue later. A bad move? Nay. <laughs> I had no that's idea a, McDonald's owned them. Joke. Yeah, seven? do they still own them? <laughs> no, they no, only owned them for only seven, for seven years. years. It's pat. It's se it's seven years uh, after two thousand was two thousand and seven. Yep, two thousand to two thousand and seven. McDonald's was like McDonald's came in and said, "Weird, we'll just buy all this play." Like they got real <laughs> estate at, and shit, and yeah. I think it was going to be these idiots who overexpanded. Let me just take their locations. I think what they were going to do was come in, take it, and not turn it into like McDonald's, but turn it into like Chipotle's probably. Mm. Um, you know, cause it, it like, you walked into that Boston market and it has a very like Chipotle, like here's the sneeze guard. Here's where all the food goes like that kind of bullshit. And it's like, mm -hmm. we'll just repurpose this into Chipotle's. And then they went, oh, I guess people still want to buy this stupid slop. So <laughs> sell it to them, I guess. They, they could just go to a grocery store. That, <laughs> I, the fact that their business was undone by Vaughn's selling rotisserie <laughs> chickens. It's just yeah. like. Everybody's wow, Kroger going, sells man. chickens? I'm never going yeah. to Boston Market again. Gotta say, went to got a lot of rotisserie chickens growing up from, from uh Albertsons and the like. Never well, Boston Market. The thing is, they're not they don't just sell them, they're pre-cooked. You just grab them and go. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? You just yep. eat them. They're just sitting there under the warm yep. light. Ready to go. It, it tells it, you, you look for you look for the sticker that has the most recent timestamp on it. Uh huh. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's Done. almost like cooking it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Boston Market is the number two selling Thanksgiving restaurant in the United States, which makes it impossible to get it delivered on the week of Thanksgiving. Even though you're doing a Thanksgiving podcast for the third or fourth year in a row, and everyone knows about it, but still can't make it happen. Sarah. Oh, what's that about? Uh, just thinking, just thinking out loud, putting it together. Just <laughs> that's a, see, is that a Sarah thing? Out. I feel like that. What I Thanksgiving like that, podcast are you on, Eric? I think that's been a thing since uh -huh. before she even started. <laughs> it's Nick is um, saying yes. <laughs> let's just say Nick and I. Uh, we work on some other shows. 
and mm. there's you wouldn't know, know about them, and there's mm. no need to know about them. Sounds but sounds like you're getting off topic. There's been a little <laughs> bit, yeah, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it on track though. There's been this is this is this is relevant because it's about Boston Market. It's they've said, hey, we're doing Thanksgiving. Do you want anything, Boston Market? Because going back to what I said, it's kind mm -hmm. of the air of like, oh, oh, this, oh, this is this is classy. Yeah, we'll do mm -hmm. Boston Market. Okay, cool. Day. Day of. No, I can't get Boston Market. What do you mean you can't get? They sell food. That's what they do. Like, oh, it's, I guess it's too late or whatever. All right, whatever. 11 months later. Hey, Thanksgiving. <laughs> have a Boston Market. Try again. Got it. We're a month early. Month later. No, nah, I couldn't get it. What do you mean you couldn't get it? Don't they sell food? Who's getting it? It's like. It's like PS5 restocks. Like, how? Do, who's get a bunch PS5. of bots are getting turkey? And, <laughs> like, who's getting the fucking food? Boston Market. They're the PlayStation Five of Thanksgiving restaurants. It's tough. <laughs> I I make I make so much money doing Thanksgiving scalping. Like, yeah, just oh. buy up all the turkeys you, uh, and yeah. all all of the single divorcee dads who are trying to make a, a special day, yeah. <laughs> a special day for their kids, come to me. When oh, they need man. their turkey, fucking yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up, up with that. I don't know what's up with that. But we should get mm. the, we should get to the bottom of it. I hear um, Popeyes does does a deep fried turkey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is. Uh, I mean, this isn't bad. You know, we're we're shooting this on December first, so mm. it's almost like we had it on Thanksgiving. It's close, um, although you know we did get it ourselves. It's not really uh -huh. the same thing. Get yes, your sir. order in for December or for Thanksgiving twenty twenty two. Do it oh, now. Just just go ahead two years. Yeah. Just okay. in case. Like uh, pivoting its business strategy, Boston Market partnered with the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. There's no pause there. I just added one. Mm -hmm. To put restaurants on bases across the world. Imagine eating Boston Market before getting shipped off to war. What a last meal. <laughs> Jesus. One, one last taste of America before I, I mean, go. They probably, they probably eat after they leave, you know, like rations or something. Yeah. Are well, they Boston Market rations? Down. I don't know if that's a thing. That'd Just be a good I, government contract. I cannot to get. fathom you can do anything with this food that'll make it last longer than <laughs> two hours. Okay. Just like, add water, dehydrate. I got it. I got it like hot and fresh, and I felt like the shelf life was uh, <laughs> dissipating quickly. Yeah, no kidding. And those are just the facts. Do we I learn a lot? Do you guys learn a lot about later. Boston Market? I learned some. I don't feel like I learned a lot. There was a lot there. Not a lot of Boston it was, facts. It was, there wasn't a ton there. There was a lot there. You learned about McDonald's stuff. You learned about um, bankruptcies. You learned about I mean, IPOs. Have they done any... all, there was only five facts. There's always one facts. was just like Not the your opening <laughs> boring one, which you always do. It's so not really, boring. Like four, it's a, it's yeah. a straight, the fact about the There's like IPOs. four interesting ones, but mm -hmm. then one was like a throwaway nonsense about another podcast. So that one doesn't really count. <laughs> so really you had three. You had three facts. So it was a little light. Five. I think there were five facts. <laughs> right? I mean. No. Don't George, I, don't, I don't disagree. Five strong facts. And those are just oh, the strong, oh. five strong you, facts. I mean, you, you, all, you escalated even from five facts, which is debatable, to strong facts, which yeah. is just... Five excellent facts about oh, Boston Why do you, you, keep, you keep upselling them? Yeah. They're great facts. Really, they're fantastic facts. Five, five facts. unimpeachable facts. facts. <laughs> <laughs> five facts, I win. Oh. You can recount them all you want. There's five. <laughs> 